A couple videos ago, we learned how to use the SolidWorks toolbox to create machine components such as gears and bearings. The link to that video is down below if you haven't watched it already. In this lecture, we will learn how to use the hole wizard to create threaded holes and the smart fastener feature as an alternative to finding the actual fasteners ourselves. So let's look at two general rules about holes for fasteners. The first one is regarding tapping a hole, which is the process of removing material inside the hole to create threads that match those of the fastener. And the second one is regarding bodies that are connected using bolts and nuts. The first rule of thumb states that the length of the threaded section of the hole should be at least twice the nominal diameter of the fastener. So if for example we have two plates that we're going to join using a countersunk screw, we would drill a countersunk hole through the top plate and a tapped hole through the second plate. The length of the hole in the second plate, the one with the threads, should be at least two times the nominal diameter of the screw. The second rule states that the length of the bolt should be enough for it to have at least two complete threads protruding from the nut at the other end. For instance, if we have two plates, two washers and the nut, the total length of the bolt should be at least the two thicknesses plus two W plus H, the height of the nut, plus two times the pitch of the bolt. Of course, there are other recommendations slash requirements that you can find about threads in engineering handbooks, for example, the fact that the non-threaded hole for the top plate in the first example has to be slightly larger than the nominal diameter of the screw itself. However, SolidWorks does a pretty good job at estimating and recommending dimensions for threaded components like these, so we'll stick to those here, for the most part, at least. So let's quickly go over what the nomenclature that we use for fasteners is. A link to a machine design lecture will be found down in the description for you to watch and learn some context of what we care about when selecting screws and bolts, so make sure to check that too. The distance between repeating elements is what we call pitch. In the case of screws, the pitch is the distance between crests. The nominal diameter refers to the larger diameter or the diameter that you would easily be able to measure using a caliper. We use the minor, root or pitch diameters for other calculations, like you probably learned about in the linked video below. But for the purposes of creating these components in SolidWorks, we will stick to nominal diameters. In metric, the most general nomenclature will show is the nominal diameter in millimeters after the letter capital M, followed by a multiplication sign and then the pitch also in millimeters. So, for example, this screw would have a nominal diameter of 12 millimeters and a pitch or distance from crest to crest of 1.5 millimeters. In English units, we can have more detailed information, but the most summed up version will tell us the nominal diameter in inches, followed by a dash and the number of threads per inch. In this example, this screw would have a nominal diameter of 3 eighths of an inch and 32 threads per inch. If we wanted to know the pitch value, we would divide 1 inch into 32 threads to find that distance in inches. Worth mentioning here is that the lowest fraction of an inch you will find for the nominal diameter is 1 eighth of an inch. Some diameters that are lower and also slightly above this number receive a different nomenclature with even number values between 2 and 12. To find the actual diameter dimension, you can google the size to find charts that have that information. And again, there's a lot more to fastener nomenclature, but for the purposes of this lecture, this was what we'll use. So let's say we want to find a screw that would work to join the two plates we mentioned in the first example. And let's say we know we want to use a number 12 flat head screw. Following the first rule of thumb, we see that the threaded length of the hole should at least be twice the nominal diameter. We look up the nominal diameter of a number 12 screw to find that it is 0.216 inches. 2 times that value tells us that the threaded length should be at least 0.432 inches. Since the screw needs to go through the plate at the top, which let's say is 0.28 inches, we find that the length of the screw should be at least 0.712 inches. If we look up a flathead screw in MacMaster that uses inches and has a number 12 nominal diameter, we see that there is only one option for the threads per inch at 24 and that the next available length that is at least 0.712 inches would be at 3 fourths of an inch. Notice that 5 eighths of an inch is 0.625 which is not at least 0.712. 
This means that if we do go with 3 fourths for the length, the depth of the threaded hole in the bottom plate should be 0.75 inches from the 3 fourths of an inch minus the thickness of the top plate 0.28, which is equal to 0.47 inches. So let's choose a stainless steel screw and download the SOLIDWORKS part file that the website offers. To create the countersunk hole in the top plate, we can either create a sketch using the dimensions for the screw we'll be using, add some clearance dimension to it, following what engineering handbooks have to suggest so that a small gap exists between the screw and the hole, and then revolve it to create the hole. Alternatively, we can just go to the hole wizard under the features tab to have SOLIDWORKS help us create it much more easily. Here, under the different options of the type of hole, we select countersink. For the standard, we choose inches. For the type of flathead screw, we choose 82, since that is the taper angle we saw when selecting our screw, and the size will be that for a number 12 screw. In this case, we want the hole to go through all. We go to the Positions tab, and we select the surface where the hole will exist. We select it to be centered, and we click OK. Notice that SOLIDWORKS actually used the same idea we had in mind. For the bottom plate, we'll also use the hole wizard. In this case, we select a straight tap, which is what we would use to physically create the threads inside the hole, inches, number 12-24, since we do need to give the pitch information for those threads here, and then we set the threaded length to 0.47 from our previous calculations. SOLIDWORKS will still try to recommend the at least two times the diameter rule, but since we had to select a longer screw, we'll actually modify this. The number on top, which refers to the length of the smaller hole that you drill before coming in with the tap and creating the threads by removing extra material, will automatically adapt when we set the new threaded length. We go to Positions, select the top plane, center the hole, and click OK. We can create an assembly from the bottom part as the reference, and then we bring in the top plate and the screw from McMaster, and we create all the mates, which we learned about in a previous assembly video, link below, to see that everything matches correctly. If we create drawings for the top plate, we can learn about the whole callout option. If we go to Insert, Model Items, and select Entire Model, like we usually do to bring in most of the existing dimensions, we see that the dimensions for the hole itself are missing. If we select Hole Callout and click on the hole, we get exactly what we would want. We see that the through all hole is 0.23 inches, which corresponds to the number 12 nominal diameter, or 0.228 if we change the decimal places to 3, and we have an 82 degree taper that begins at a diameter of 0.44, or again, 0.438 if we increase the decimal places. Doing the same for the bottom plate, meaning create drawings, adding existing dimensions, and using the hole callout option, we see that we have a pilot hole, 0.177 inches in diameter, 0.6 inches deep, and then an actual threaded hole for a 12-24 thread, 0.47 inches deep. Better and much quicker than anything that we could dimension manually. For the second example that I mentioned earlier, we use the same basic concepts, following the second rule of thumb. If the washers we bought can have a thickness that varies between 40 and 60 thousandths of an inch, and the hex knot is 21 60 fourths of an inch tall, we would want our ball to be at least the sum of the thickness of the two blocks we're joining, the worst case scenario thickness of the washers, so that even in the case where we got really thick washers, the bolt will still protrude to at least two pitches, the hex knot height, and the two pitches that the ball needs to protrude which would be 2 times the pitch of 1 over 32 inches. This length would be then 1.911 inches. By looking up a hex bolt 38-32, we see that the closest yet longer length to this value is 2 inches. So we use that one. We get our 3D part file, we drill the holes in our blocks, specifically for 3 eighths of an inch nominal diameter bolt, and we assemble it all together. Two blocks, two washers, the nut, and the bolt going through. And great, we see that with this bolt, we in fact get more than two threads protruding from the hex nut, successfully meeting the rule of thumb requirement. To finish up this lecture, I'll mention what the smart fastener feature does. Instead of finding the screw or bolt through MacMaster, we can use this SOLIDWORKS tool to suggest a component that would match our holes. For example, if we go back to the flathead screw, we can activate the toolbox add-in, 
like we explained in a previous lecture, link below, and select the Smart Fasteners option. If we select the tapered hole from the screw, we can hit Add and SolidWorks will recommend the best fit for this. Notice that the 12-24 size is correct and even the length matches what we chose in MacMaster, even if it's not the same Phillips head screw. Now, of course, these recommendations, although useful for creating a random but working assembly of our design, do not guarantee that we're going to be able to purchase that screw or that bolt. So if we instead look up the part ourselves using websites like McMaster, we know that we can buy the part and put our parts together in the real world. Therefore, when thinking about actually making this assembly exist in the real world, it's better to look up the parts you are able to buy directly instead of using this feature. The other lectures of the SOLIDWORKS course, as well as the playlists to other engineering courses, are linked in the description below. So make sure to check those out. Thanks for watching.